showdown in Moscow as two men claim to be president of Russia. And find out how you can take part in a scientific adventure thousands of miles away. Hello. A dramatic struggle for power is taking place in Russia. Two men claim to be president and in control of the country. Boris Yeltsin was undisputed leader till last night when he took the remarkable decision to sack the whole Russian parliament. In turn, they voted to sack him and name Alexander Rutskoy president. Now both men are fighting a war of words in Russia's capital, Moscow, and trying to win powerful supporters to their side. Newsround's Paul Welsh reports. For several years now, Russia has been going through enormous change, moving from the strict times of communism to a freer way of life. But for many Russians, life is still hard, and lately Boris Yeltsin's attempts to make Russia more like the West have been hampered by the country's parliament. There are former communists in the parliament who think Yeltsin's doing too much, too fast. Some support older ways of running the country, and they've been making Yeltsin's life difficult. He wanted elections to a new parliament so it would stand for what people want now. Parliament refused to call an election. So, last night in a TV speech to his country, Boris Yeltsin announced he was scrapping parliament and calling elections for December. Officially, he was breaking Russia's laws. But Britain's Prime I Minister John Major and other Western leaders agree he's done the right thing. I believe they should be allowed to elect a genuinely democratic and representative parliament. And that is why I believe President Yeltsin is right. That is why I believe he deserves all our continuing support. Russia's parliament say because of what he's done, Yeltsin is no longer president of the country. They appointed Alexander Rushkoy president instead. And now both Yeltsin and the parliament claim they run Russia. Yeltsin went out into the streets to meet the people today as if to show he's unafraid of his opponents. While he spoke of his plans for the future, the parliament were meeting nearby, forming their own plans. But Yeltsin seems to be winning. The support of the army is important because force could be used to win power. It seems Yeltsin may have been planning for the showdown for some time. For weeks he's been sweet-talking the army generals, and earlier this month he gave the soldiers a surprise pay rise. Now the army seem to be supporting Yeltsin, but they say they mustn't be asked to force the parliament to give in. The struggle for power may take a long time to work itself out, but with the army, Russia's bank and Western governments on his side, it seems that for the moment, Yeltsin has the upper hand. A huge rescue operation is underway in America after a passenger train became derailed and plunged into an alligator-filled swamp. At least 50 of the 210 people on board are reported to have died in the accident. The train crashed near Mobile in Alabama as it crossed the bridge. One carriage was left totally underwater and two others were partly submerged. Nobody's sure what caused the crash, but one survivor said the bridge seemed to collapse under the train as it crossed. Emergency crews are still working to find out about 30 missing passengers. Britain's top chess player, Nigel Short, has had a disastrous first two weeks in the Times World Chess Championships. He's playing the world number one, Garry Kasparov, in London. Last night, Short lost Game 7 of the championship, the fourth time he's been defeated. With one point for each win, Kasparov is now way ahead, leading by five and a half to one and a half. But some experts still think Short's got a chance, like top women's player Sarah Christopher. I think he can turn it round. I think that um, Gary could get overconfident. Gary's going for several world records to try and win a match by the biggest margins. So maybe if he fails on those and he pushes for it too much, Nigel could come through. They've got 17 more games to play. The first to get 12 and a half points will take the title of world champion. Scientists in the United States are puzzling over what they think could be evidence of intelligent life in space. Project META has been scanning the sky with a radio telescope for the last eight years. Out of 100 billion signals they've picked up, 37 remain unexplained. While the chance of them coming from aliens is unlikely, the astronomers say it can't be ruled out for the moment. And finally, children all over Britain will get the chance to take part in a unique scientific adventure called the Barclays Life Jason Project. 
Next spring, Jason Project scientists will be studying rainforests and coral reefs in the Central American country of Belize. Children in Britain will be able to talk to them live as they work, and a Newsround press packer will travel to Belize to report on the project. Here's more from Juliet. Meet Jason, a special remote-controlled underwater robot that can go where no person has gone before. He's equipped with cameras capable of beaming live pictures from deep under the ocean via a satellite high in the sky to locations around the world. Live pictures can be sent from on land, too. At special sites set up in countries like America, children receive the pictures as they're being filmed and speak to the scientists at work. As you may have seen on Newsround, Jason's pictures were beamed to Britain for the first time in March this year. Children in Liverpool watch the scientists at work underwater in Mexico. This time round, thousands more British children will be able to share the experience. Sites capable of receiving Jason's pictures from Belize are to be set up across the country. There's also the chance for a Newsround press packer to travel to Belize and report on the project for Newsround. If you're a member and would like to go, all you have to do is write a report on a science issue that you care about. It could be about a special science scheme in your area or a new discovery you've heard about. The live link-ups from the rainforests and coral reefs of Belize begin next February. And there's more information about that competition and details of how to join the press pack on Newsround CFAX pages, which begin, if you didn't already know, at page 170. That's it for today. See you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.